people are lying if they say that they have life figured out. It's gonna be okay even if you don't have it figured out or you're probably never gonna fully figure it out. I'm in a midlife crisis and all these adults were like, that's not a midlife crisis. I'm like, you've no fucking idea. I feel so lost right now. Even though you're living together, that doesn't replace like hanging out together. Don't let your partner become your roommate. Exactly. So totally. people are, often, they come to my place and they're like, how much do you pay for this? This is like in the center of Amsterdam. I mean, I can be open and honest. We pay also with my bachelor when I was coming to an end. I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> Hello, my lovely people. My name is Bibi Jane and this is the podcast for and about people in their 20s that are trying to beat the algorithm of life. Today, I'm with your favorite Amsterdam girly, Natalie. Hello. We are going to be talking about all things moving in with your boyfriend, how to actually make friends in your 20s, and that pressure to feel like you have to have life figured out. It's going to be a good one. Buckle up. I'm excited. <laughs> Natalie, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on my first ever podcast. This I'm is so exciting. I'm so excited too. Yes. Let's get into it. Let's so. The people that know you best in your life, how would they describe you? I think the first thing um, that I usually hear from like all my closest friends, they're always like, you're so positive. Like, how are you able to be like just so happy about things? Like, I feel like people are always like, you're so bubbly. You're so smiley. With my closest friends, I think they would say I'm really honest. Like, you'll know if we're really close, if I'm able to be really honest with you because I have a hard time doing that but if I'm really comfortable with you then I will be like super honest about anything like and I think probably the last thing that people often say which always means a lot is that people are like you always get what you want like they're, they're always oh. like you you set your eyes on something or you like yeah and then you like get it like I, I don't even know but that's what a lot of people are always like you just go for what you want so, I like that yeah so and how would you introduce yourself then? So that one, <laughs> I it's feel like... It's a hard one. It's so hard. It's so hard. But yeah, I'm usually like, hi, I'm Natalie, um, 21 years old, and I moved to Amsterdam four years ago. Yeah, I don't know. It's I guess it's so hard because I, I feel like a lot of people's identity sometimes comes from like where they're from or where they grew up or, or something. their work. I yeah, or their lot. work. That's true. So it's like, hi, I'm this and this. I do this and this. That's and that. true. But I mean, introductions are a big thing. This is not even like the topic, yeah. but like, no. <laughs> introductions are a big thing. Um, but I think it also depends who you're introducing yourself to. Yeah, that's so true. You can like cater. Yeah, your, I'm like, thinking of like university context and it's always all about like yeah. your name, how old you are. And then where you've lived. Yeah. No, it's super interesting. I met you like not even long ago. Like yeah. a month ago. I've been following you longer than that though. And Same. I never told you this, but like you remind me so much of like my 21 year old self in some ways. Mm. Yeah. And I don't know how you feel about it, but like for me, 21 was like the sexiest number. Oh, like yeah. I remember like everyone, when people ask me like what age are you? I'm like, I'm 21. 21. <laughs> <laughs> it was just such a good feeling. But yeah. now you live in Amsterdam. Yeah. Um, I know your parents don't live in Amsterdam, so you did kind of like move out. Mm -hmm. At what age did that happen for you? Yeah, so that happened, I just turned 18 because I'm, I'm a summer girl. My birthday's in the summer in oh, June. Yeah. Um, so I just finished high school in Vienna, which is where I like, I guess, not grew up, but I would say it's like my most home because that's when I, I moved there when I was 13 to then graduating high school. And so I have all my high school friends there. My best friend is uh, is also, I met her there. So did, I also met my boyfriend there. So in the bubble, I kind of grew up there. It's kind of always like the norm that like once you're done with high school, you're just going to move somewhere and study. So it was really not even like a question in my mind for me. I was like, yeah, like I'm obviously going to find a university I like and then I'm just going to move there and study there. So that was kind of my first initial yeah like reaction with uh or like moving out yeah yeah no aruba where i grew up on aruba it's the same thing yeah i mean not everyone goes and you definitely don't have to there are uni universities there but and do you remember like that specific day that you either told your parents or the day you actually left how do you yeah. remember, do you remember the feelings yeah so it was like the end of summer like i just like partied the whole summer because we i graduated and like with my whole friends and everything. And I still remember I said bye to my best friend. It was so weird. It was such a weird 
Because like the whole summer felt like really endless. I was done like mid-May because I had my exams, my school exams then. And then I was just like, like living life the whole summer. And then all of a sudden, like August comes around. The you end know of August. it's going to happen. Yeah, and you're like, wait, oh my God, like my whole life is going to change. Yeah. Yeah, it was really like such a, but I was excited, but also like maybe a little naive also. Like I didn't really, I was just like, yeah. Oh like, because you were 18, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, no, 18, I was, yeah. I have the same thing. I was 17. <laughs> And I remember, you know, at the day at the airport having to say goodbye. And like, this was going to be a 10 hour flight. So I know I wasn't going to see them for a few months or like maybe a few years. And I could just see in their eyes, like they're like a little bit heartbroken and sad. Mm -hmm. So I could feel that sadness as well. But at the other side, I'm like, so excited. Yeah. It just felt so right to do this. And I was like, now life's going to start and this is it. But it was really a mixed feeling, both those things feeling so I could cry and be happy at the same time. It was very yeah weird yeah Yeah. I also had like I don't even know how to put into words I just remember feeling like I don't even know how to put into words but just mix of like feeling excited a little bit of anxiousness but also not enough to really like ruin the feeling like I was just like go with the flow like whatever that's why I I guess I was also a little naive with what was gonna hit me when I came to Amsterdam I was just like yep and I also had my mom with me so it felt like safe and she was gonna help me like you know, furnish my room and everything, yeah, go to yeah. the, do the classic Ikea trip. That's and, nice. um, but yeah, that was probably the feeling like surrounding, like moving there. Yeah. yeah. And then when it comes to moving out, um, a topic that I always land on with my friends is like that guilt feeling, like, do we do something bad? Like, are we being selfish people? Cause mm-hmm. we just moved out. Yeah. What do you, I think for both of us, like it is a pretty normal move for where we come from. Yeah. But do you ever think about that in any way? So interesting because I feel like, like part, of course, you know, you see your parents, like my mom was tearing up when she had to like head back to the Mm -hmm. airport, like after she had like Mm -hmm. helped me settle, she was like, she like cried in the taxi home and like, (laughs) she was like, I'm going to leave you. (laughs) Um, So like, of course you feel a little bit of like, oh my God, I'm going to also like, I'm going to also miss my parents and like the life I had. Um, But first of all, I mean, I guess. I didn't think of it too much because I also have a younger sister. So I was like, eh, my parents still have my sister. Like, they're going to be fine. Oh, yeah. (laughs) But um, also, I think my parents, they grew up really independently. So, like, and also, like, my dad lost his parents really young. So his mom, his parents were divorced. And so he didn't know his dad. But his mom died in a car accident really young. So he had had to, like, do it all on his own from from the age of 21, I think, or something like that. And my mom like moved in with him. So they started their own life really young as well. Like kind of, I guess, separate from their parents. So it's almost like they were like, yeah, you, you spread your wings as well and go do it. So it was like, came also a lot from them that they were like, this is important to move out and do your thing. So I don't know. I guess I didn't, at that moment, I didn't even like think of the guilt or anything. Right. Even now I'm a little like, eh. Because that's, I feel like, what my parents kind of want from for me, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I mean, for me, I think I owe my parents the world, you know, like how yeah. they raised me and everything. But I think at the same time, if they could hand me the world, they would do it as well. Exactly. You know, like, I think they they were also excited for me deep inside. Yeah. And they knew that, oh, my gosh, she's going to grow and learn. And yeah. I think, you know, so exactly. I, maybe it was also a mixed feeling for them. I, I don't know. No, yeah. no, for sure. No, but I totally resonate with that because my, my dad actually grew up really not in the greatest conditions as in like he had to, yeah, work his way up and everything. He was like with a single mom growing up. Um, so he always said like, my goal was always to give you like 10 times more than what my mom could ever give me. And I was like, And then he said, like, and I hope you do that for your kids as well. So I don't know. That really resonated with me. I was really like, yeah, my parents are giving me the world and Mm -hmm. so that I can do even more. But do you then feel the pressure of like, oh, wow, now I need to really make it happen? Um, Yeah, but I would say, I mean, there's always like pros and cons to everything. And I feel like my parents have, I really, yeah, like me and my parents have such good relationships. So the way they've raised me is to like work hard for everything. Um, but always that they're there to support me. And that's really fortunate. And I'm super privileged that I have that like as my backbone, but it's always been very clear, like, but you're going to work for like, like 
yeah, almost like everything, or like you need to like work hard in life to like get what you want. And we're not going to just hand that to you. We're going to help you um, in every way we can, but you need to, yeah, make sure you're working hard. So like a mix of pressure, but I always know they're going to be like there to help me. And the way they've raised me, I feel like has made me be like, I want to do it for myself as well and not just rely on them or anything like that. So, yeah. What would your advice be for anyone that is maybe currently in the process of thinking of moving out or already in the process of moving out? Yeah, that is a big question. Um, being on your own, at least I was living alone in a studio, like with one of the student housing things. So like in this cute little, like tiny kitchen and I loved it. Same. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a lot of people have the same experience yeah. <laughs> in the North. Um, oh, yeah. So um, yeah, I feel like the biggest thing when you're also like living alone, like not with roommates or whatever, is you need to like put yourself out there. Because like even with uni and like, like I guess... You grew up in maybe not a bubble in high school, or at least I did, but even just anyone going to high school or like their whole life going through schooling, you're kind of in a sense forced to socialize. Whereas in uni, like, you know, like, no, you're not like you could just so fall, true. fall off the face of the earth and no one would care. Literally. Yeah. And I think it depends on which study you're doing, but I remember being in a big ass classroom mm -hmm. Yeah, and everyone people. just came in there get their notes done, yeah. out of here. Like, yeah, that. exactly. So, and people already have maybe sometimes their friend groups already. Their jobs. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Their other priorities. Um, so I think that was the biggest thing living alone. I realized for the first time, especially because I'm such a social person, like how lonely I felt. I had my boyfriend living in Delft, but that almost made me like lonelier because I was just like, I'm just going to visit him every weekend. Like that was kind of like my fix for the week. I would just be like, get out of Amsterdam as soon as possible, like once I'm done with all my classes for the week and go out. And I had like no social life in Amsterdam. I really, like I had, I made like a few friends, but I guess, yeah, I was in a weird mindset or like maybe denial that I had, I have like my best friend from high school and all my like closest girlfriends from high school. And I was like in this weird denial that like, I'm not gonna find any people as great as them. So I'm just gonna have them like when I go back home and then for now I'm gonna have my boyfriend. Which I think yeah. is such a like toxic mindset. Yeah. So. But I think it, it is a typical thing for an international student. Yeah. Because you, I remember coming to the Netherlands and you just feel like everyone already has their friend group somewhere yeah. in the country at least. Yeah. Mine are like 10,000 miles away. Yeah. And it's so hard to start over. Yeah. Like it is. all my friends knew like me since I was young. They know all the exactly. good and bad things I went through. And now I need to. Like restart? Yeah. yeah. How, how do I... I've never done this. Yeah. I, what do you mean? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 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 I think that was the biggest thing, like really putting myself out there. And like, you don't only have to do that in partying, you know? Like I would kind of then throw myself into a few parties or whatever. And like, but there's... Now that I've lived in Amsterdam for so much longer and I'm still technically a student, I'm doing my master's, like, and I found my like close friends here and it makes me so happy, but... Yeah, I needed to like put myself out there, text people, um, like join um, like where I work out. You know, you can meet people there. You can really meet people anywhere. All you got to do is give them a nice smile and be like, hi, I'm Natalie, like, like and get to know people. Good one. Um, so I feel like that's the biggest advice I have. Yeah. Or else you're, you're just going to like, because you only have yourself at first. So you need to rely on yourself also to meet other people or you'll fall into like a bad spiral of just being on your own and being lonely because yeah like I said you're not you don't have to be in a social situation you really have to like when you're in a uni or when you're in your 20s like no one cares anymore Literally. no one's trying to help you socialize or whatever so yeah 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 I think and also for years we've made our friends at school yeah with high school and everything so I made you good you made a really good point of saying you need to actually make friends outside of there too. Yeah. And it's not only partying. No, It's exactly. also at where you're working out or... Yeah, or think. anything. Yeah. Like if you enjoy art um, or like whatever yeah. it is you enjoy and doing. the internet. I've yeah, made so many... Internet. I know you from the internet. Yeah, we met. <laughs> I know a lot of internet friends. So. Yeah. So going back to advice for anyone that is maybe in the process of moving out, I would say you're never ready. Yeah. You just got to do it. Even though I was 17 and sometimes I'm like, girl, you could have just waited out a little bit. Like, I don't know where the rush came from, but I think you're never ready. There is like a financial 
situation where you need to be financially ready to yeah. do it. But you're never yeah. going to be ready, I think. Yeah. yeah, no, you just got to take the first step. Okay, so you mentioned that you lived alone when you came here. Yeah. But I know you live now with your boyfriend. Yes. So we need to talk about living with the boyfriends, living yes. with the partners. Yes. How did this happen for you? So this it was actually a really like random but also like natural process because of COVID. Um, so yeah, I started uni t- 2019, then March 2020, COVID happened. So I moved out of that little cute studio I had. Shame, but... <laughs> um, and then we actually moved in with his parents who lived in Brussels at the time. Oh. Um, yeah, because we were so freaked out by the whole COVID situation. I remember I like took the train at 7 a.m. on a Friday when uh, I think my uni announced that we were gonna take a break for two weeks and like hopped on the train, got to Delft, saw the supermarkets being like empty. And I was like, worst call. Yeah, I was literally like, call your parents right now. <laughs> I don't feel safe here. So, and at this point, how long are you together? With to, but at this point we were together for, I think almost four years. Like cool. we were going to have our Got four it. year anniversary. Yeah. It's fine. And I love his parents. So I, yeah, it's like, we've been together for four years. I don't know if I would do it after only dating for one or two years, then maybe that's a little more like, I don't know your parents that well. Can I stay with them? Yeah. We moved in with his parents. Then after that, we kind of flip flop back and forth. We lived in Italy for a bit, super random, yeah. So then when COVID kind of ended, we were like, okay, well, we're both gonna do our masters now. You're gonna go to Delft, I'm gonna do it in Amsterdam, but you don't have to be there at uni all the time. And like Delft isn't the most like fun place to live. So he was already like, yeah, I would also love to live in Amsterdam. That would be so cool. And especially because we would go back to kind of what I was doing the first year, except probably he would be coming to Amsterdam every weekend. So it just made sense to like, let's just move in together. Then it's also like financially, like cheaper rent. Um, We know it's a big one. Yes, exactly. (laughs) In Amsterdam, like, (laughs) but also like, I don't know, we didn't even really, of course, like we didn't really think about it. Like we were just like, yeah, it makes sense. And I see a lot of people are like, holy crap, like you're, 21 or you moved in we moved in together when i was just 20 i think for me it also happened naturally i was also really young yeah i don't even i think like 19 20 as well okay wow yeah and only now i realized that i was that young but like (laughs) you said it just happened like naturally yeah it's it's not to be like that romantic bitch but like (laughs) yeah i wanted to be around this guy the whole time so for me it just made sense i was either at his place or he was at mine so i was like why are we paying two rents yeah, when we could just pay one? <laughs> like that's the same thing that I was thinking. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. So it just it just kind of happened. But what can we say for people that are, are, think, like, are like thinking about it? Yeah. yeah. A big thing that makes, I think, me and my boyfriend's relationship work so well living together is that we still have our separate lives. Like we're not just each other doing things with each other, living every day like second together oh and, yeah because I feel like then you lose yourself and then you then you just yeah coexist in a an un, in an unhealthy way I think at least so you know I still go to uni and so does he like once a week he has his um own workout thing that he does he does jujitsu. Mm-hmm. um <laughs> he just took it up he was All just right. like this is fun I'm gonna try it out <laughs> I was like do it um I also go to my own workout classes I meet my friends for coffee But that's, I guess that's one side of the coin, but also like prioritizing, like, even though you're living together, that doesn't replace like hanging out together, you know? Oh yeah. I was talking to someone about this other day, like, don't let your partner become your roommate. Exactly. No. Your partner cannot become your roommate. Exactly. You need to still plan dates or even just grabbing coffee or going on a walk. Yeah. If there's anyone that doesn't live with their partner, I bet you're probably thinking like, oh, it would just be so much easier to live together. Then we don't need to like go to his house go to my house but even when you live together you still need to put in that effort yeah of planning things and making things happen because it's very easy to just fall in that like daily slump of like okay the time we spend together is in front of the tv yeah like exactly and then you're not sounds really cheesy but like developing your relationship like i think that's a big part of why we work so well together is because we like to also do things together of course like I said the other side is like not letting it consume us where that's like the only thing we have is each other because I think then you also get in this like 
weird codependency that like we have to do everything together and we're each oh, other's yeah. lives and like yeah, that's yeah, yeah. all yeah but like yeah but that's like one side of the conversation of course is very like practical things like yeah, that like you it. need to make sure that you've discussed like like how rent payment how you're gonna split up the groceries also who's gonna do what tasks like it's not a sexy conversation but it needs to happen yeah, it does it does so it does you also mentioned um, about needing your own space and that's a big one for me because like I said in the beginning it's like I want to be around this guy all the time all the living time. together sounds amazing right so when I got those feelings of like oh I, maybe I might need my space I was like wait a second red flag I don't love this guy. Something's wrong. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> pause. The more I like talk to other people about it, it was like, no, it's totally normal Yeah. to want your own space. And some people will need it more than others. Yeah. Um, but I felt like, no, I need it. Like I love a good little alone time. Yeah. And I, that's how I recharge. That's how I thrive. And I think communicating about that is really important because yeah. for someone that maybe that doesn't require that space, it's like, what do you mean you want Why space? You want to like yeah. break up? Like what's what's going on? Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's really important to be like honest about that. Yeah. I know it's really cliche to be like communication's everything, yeah. but communication really it really is. Yeah. And I don't think you can prepare for these things. Like I I was imagining how it's gonna be like. I'm like, so how do you do your dishes? Like, do you like do it like when you cook or do you do it after? Like I think there's a lot that you're just gonna have to kind of see. Yeah. I feel like I mean it's also cliche to be like there should be like a feeling kind of there but I mean I was like yeah I guess the fact that we didn't even really think about it I mean to some people might look naive but to me that that just felt right because there wasn't like a not that it's wrong to like consider moving no. it together <laughs> but like for me that's just how I knew it was right because I didn't even have to be like wait a minute is this gonna work or is this gonna work and it it just has yeah so yeah I feel like finding someone or at least for what works with me my boyfriend I think so was that we have like very similar values and I think then that builds on a lot of things of how we imagine living together is like and yeah. how we spend our time or our money uh, like on groceries and on what and Dude, yeah and I think one. then if maybe that's not super aligned your values then that's yeah where maybe things go a little yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay so we touched a little bit on living in Amsterdam I know you love living in Amsterdam. Yes. I but what has it been like for you? Like, what has made you fall in love with Amsterdam? I think I really started falling in love when I moved in with my boyfriend. Before then, I actually was feeling, I did not feel like Amsterdam was my home. I Like the first year, like I said, since I would basically go to Delft every weekend and I would kind of, yeah, I would barely even explore Amsterdam as a city. Um I felt like I didn't know Amsterdam. I didn't feel connected to it. Um, and it's such a nice city. And of course, I know that now, but that's that's what made me fall in love with Amsterdam, like putting myself out there, exploring all the little, yeah, little neighborhoods, little cafes. And I just love that Amsterdam, um, you can bike everywhere. I don't know. That's something that is just so special to me. Well, you're going to hate that I cannot for the life bike of me. <gasps> I'm really sorry. Are you even a true Dutchie? <laughs> I know. Definitely not. No. <laughs> Anything with wheels, get me off. Yeah. Oh so, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I do think it's like a part of being in Amsterdam, so. Yeah. and But I mean, if you don't bike, then you can still walk everywhere. Like, I yeah, mean, yeah. and the public transport is so good. I mm -hmm. mean, coming from Jena, the public transport is also great. You can technically bike to a lot of places. But just the fact that Amsterdam is... Big enough to not get boring, but small enough to still feel cozy and at home. And then you can, you know, have a routine in wherever you live and go to the same um, cafe, or at least that's what I do. It's kind of my routine. I mean, I like to switch it up a little bit and explore, of course, still. But that was something that me and my boyfriend did at the beginning when we moved in. We like explored our little area and who are the people there and which cafes and restaurants yeah. are there or just like walking around the canals and now me and my boyfriend really like consider Amsterdam a home, our home like yeah. we get so excited to like after summer vacation or whatever like flying back or even for Christmas and then flying back I'm actually like yeah. I'm going home that's so, nice yeah. and how what would you say about the language because I think maybe there are more people out there that are 
yeah. English speaking and are like, I want to move to Amsterdam, but I don't know if I, will I make yeah. it yeah. with English language? I think absolutely. Like Amsterdam is the place to be for like a foreign place where you don't speak the language. It's kind of almost bad how amazing everyone in Amsterdam is with English because it makes me not have the motivation to learn Dutch because I'm like, I literally don't need it. Like you can get around. It's perfect. It's perfect for an international student. Because of, yeah, because of the, there's not going to be a language barrier. At least yeah. I haven't experienced yeah. it. And yeah, of course I've learned like the basics of Dutch, but I, I feel like I need to give back to like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> by learning Dutch, but you don't need That's to, fine. to put it But something. then you've also experienced Delft a little bit. Yeah. Would you say that Delft is then? Yeah. Very different. Yeah. 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 You need okay, the, cool. I would, I guess also with my blonde hair and my boyfriend, he's really tall. So every time we would be out and about going to the grocery store, going to shops, people would always speak to us in Dutch first. Yeah. And then we'd be like, oh, sorry, we only speak English. And they would just keep talking in Dutch because I feel like <laughs> they just wouldn't believe us. They were like, no, nope. yeah. or, or they, I don't know, don't talk English that yeah. well there. So I think Amsterdam is really a hub of like just, and that's why I also love it so much. You'll meet so many interesting people from all over the world. Like it's very international. And I think... That's a big reason why I love it so much. Yeah. I think that for anyone that's thinking about moving to Amsterdam, they're probably going to ask about rent. I yeah. don't think there is a magic trick. People always ask, but I don't think there's a magic trick. I don't think there is like a, no, here's how you do it. It's going to be expensive. Yes, some places are more affordable. It's going to be hard to get a place. Yeah. Right now, I moved away from Amsterdam just so I can have more space. And I think it definitely... That's smart. It's definitely helped to live yeah. in a bigger space and to not pay crazy amount of money i do miss amsterdam but i think it's just about making choices i'm in a really lucky position where my parents support me financially and also living with my boyfriend is just cutting the rent in half a one bedroom apartment so oh. people often they come to my place and they're like holy crap like how much do you pay for this this is like in the center of amsterdam and not to downplay at all like it's definitely still expensive Um, I mean, I can be open and honest. We pay around 2000 together. So that's like 1000 per person right. uh, with utilities, uh, everything included. Do you know, kind of know how big the space is? I think, that I think it's 55 cool. square meters. Yeah. So and it's, definitely um, in the city center. So yeah, like yeah. in the city center near Central Station. Um, and it's a one bedroom apartment. So that, of course, makes it easier. It's, I think, a lot harder if you're looking like as a single person with a roommate even because then you need a two-bedroom apartment yeah. and yeah so it is definitely hard but sometimes maybe putting it into more realistic terms because I think people I often post my apartment online and then I get comments being like that's like five thousand a month and I'm like <laughs> no I could never afford that like my no <laughs> so it like it is I guess still reasonable. That's a lot of money, but you know, I'm trying to like put it into perspective. Like yeah, I it's think not there are different kind of houses in Amsterdam. Yeah. And there's different areas that you could still live. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where you can even, uh, I have friends who ha like are for a room of like living with four people and they pay for the room, I think are paying like 500 euros or something. And then you of course live a little outside of the center, yeah. like towards... Oh God, I don't even know the areas, but just outside of the rings, like yeah, further yeah. back towards west yeah, exactly. or wherever else. So it's like, yeah, not to glamorize the Amsterdam housing market. It's crazy. Yeah. But I guess to like give some hope to whoever is looking like it's it's manageable if you put a lot of time and effort into it. And I was also when I was renting or looking to rent an apartment with my boyfriend looking every day for four months on Funda and I can never pronounce the second website per every day I would be like the first that's how we got our viewings because we were the first to view the apartment because I was like on top of it like I want to see this apartment <laughs> so you need to like of course work at it also yeah. for a while to see how the housing market is what's out there yeah we already kind of touched on making friends in your 20s but I got a question on Instagram that said How do you know if your friends are taking advantage of your kindness? And I thought this was really interesting. I also sometimes have a hard time with this because I'm bad at having boundaries because I guess I'm always so like excited and happy around people that people sometimes that I'm not so close to mistake that for like, oh, we're really close friends now. And I'm always like, oh, wait, no, uh, I just oh, got yeah. like so. And then I feel like they expect something of me that I'm not able to give at least. 
But with my closest friends, I mean, I'd like to think that I've gotten really lucky, but also like picked really good friends from high school mainly. And I can almost confidently say that I know they're not taking advantage of my kindness. And I think that always comes down to two things. Um, the first, if they're actually genuinely happy for you, like mm. for any success you have or all that stuff. Good one. Yeah, I think. That's a good tip. Yeah. Talk about your successes. Yeah. Watch yeah. the reaction happen. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and especially now with like doing social media, of course, there's like been some success for me. And a lot of people, you know, like sometimes dream about like working on social media and getting brand deals and all that stuff. Like all my friends have always been so supportive and so genuinely happy. And so like, you're doing such big things. It's crazy. And like, yeah, like so genuine about being happy for me and like what I'm doing yeah. and supporting it. Um, the second thing I think is if they expect like nothing from you. I noticed this, uh, especially like once again with the whole social media thing, you know, you get gifted things or things like that, or you get to pick out clothing or whatever. And all my friends, whenever I've been like, guys, pick something out. Like I'm like, I don't need anything. And I just want you guys to pick something out. They're always like, no, 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 no. But I'm like, no, really. Like it makes me happy to like. I get what you mean. Yeah. To like, and all my closest friends. And that's how I feel like they're not taking advantage of my kindness. I've always been like more like not expecting anything from that or from me. Put it. But those yeah. Are, like, I think that your friends are your friend for you and not any like advantages that comes with being your friend mm -hmm. yeah 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 big one you're now 21 yes when i was 21 i remember i just finished my bachelor's i was very confused in life because i didn't know what i wanted to do next and it was just like a i'm in a midlife crisis and all these adults were like that's not a midlife crisis. I'm like, you've no fucking idea. I feel so lost right now. But I was also that girl that was like standing on a rooftop being like, no one has life figured out. Newsflash, no one has life figured out. But like deep inside, I just didn't believe it, I think. How, how do you view this idea of like having life figured out? And have you ever bumped into like maybe things that change your career path? Of Yeah, for sure. And even though I'm just 21, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, like people, career path, yeah, career path. <laughs> <We're> like, <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yeah. yeah, no, but I mean, I get it all the time also because I am definitely a person that is like, I need to have it figured out. Like, of, of course I do. And people are always like, calm down. You're 21. Relax. And I don't know. Like, it reminds uh, me of the TikTok where it's like, you're 20? You're 20. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. Yeah, no, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but I think that's a little bit of who I am, like I am a person who like wants a plan and wants to have it figured out. And I think that's a good part of me. Yes, yeah. of course, always drawbacks. Um, but I, I don't know. I'm a big believer that everyone is on their different path in life. And I would never judge anyone for being 28 and starting their studies or anything like that. But I, I don't know. I still, I'd like to say that I'm not in that mentality anymore that I'm like, get it done, get it done, get it done. But I, I still am to some extent. I'm yeah. doing my master's now and I'm 21 and I get it all the time of like, whoa, like you're 21. 21. Why are you doing your master's already? Yeah. Um, but that's also a part of, because I don't have it totally figured out. And I just thought that that would be the right thing to do, especially with like the means um, that I have, like being so lucky that my parents support me. I was like, I, I am able to do my master's. So I guess I just should go ahead and do it um, yeah. and get it done and get my education and then start working and then have some kids or something. I don't know. Not saying that's, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah. I guess that's me trying to figure out life. Um, and I've definitely have, I mean, I have it all the time daily. Like, what am I doing? Is this the right thing? Um, especially like now that my master's is coming to an end, I'm like, should it's, I? It's always the end. Yeah, it's, it's always, always at the end. You're like, it's the oh. graduation. Oh, yeah, anxiety. exactly. Also with my bachelor, when it was coming to an end, I was like, what the hell am I doing? <laughs> yeah. And so there's definitely been a moment where I just completely like changed what I thought I wanted to do. Uh, I thought I always wanted to become a clinical psychologist and work with kids. And that's why I went into my bachelor studying psychology. I How even, long did you know did you know that you wanted to do that? I 
started knowing that when I was around like 16 because I guess that's a phase in high school when teachers started being like yeah you need to apply to a university at least in my bubble that I grew up in and you need to find something that you want to study and apply for that and show your motivation for that so yeah it's like (laughs) it's like they sit you down and they're like okay so what do you want to do for the rest of your life and you're like fucking 16 (laughs) exactly exactly (laughs) what do you mean so I thought psychology fit best to who I was yeah um and then i also love kids so i was like okay i'm gonna do that so around then was when i made that decision i studied psychology uh, in at the uva for three years and i was also very like it's got to be three years like i know people take longer and i totally i'm like yeah you do you but i don't know something in my head was like gotta get it done and then you move on to the masters and then you get your certification or whatever um and it was towards the end of my bachelor's that all of a sudden i was like wait a minute I'm not able to do clinical psychology in Holland, or at least it's really difficult in the Netherlands because you have to speak Dutch most of the time. I know some international students that do it, but it's so hard to do clinical psychology. Um, So then I was like, I want to stay in Amsterdam. I mean, first I didn't give up my dream, so I actually applied elsewhere um, to the US and to the UK for clinical psychology. But then I really realized towards the end of my bachelor, I started content creation. Um, And it was just like a hobby. It wasn't like it was like, blowing up or anything I wasn't where I am now but that's when my interest in that all of a sudden like took a turn and I was like wait a minute I could still stay in Amsterdam because that was like a big priority of mine and then maybe go in this direction and do like something marketing related or something more like creative and yeah in that field and it's always something that I've really liked so it's not like I just like found it I guess like I I knew like as a kid I don't know some people might have this that you watch YouTubers and you're like, oh, I, I want to be that. Oh at my least. God, same. Yeah? Did yeah, you have like, that as well? Creativity or like a creative hobby was yeah. never a job in my mind. Exactly. It was always like, and I think because of this day and age now you can do, you can make certain creative things your job because yeah. of the internet and stuff. But like, that wasn't always the case. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So I think at the end of my bachelor's, I was like, like <laughs> totally changed directions, 180 and was like, I'm going to go in this direction. And that's, I guess, the thing that I was referring to at the beginning that my friends sometimes describe me as something like uh, someone when I put my mind to something like I will I will get it like I will do anything it takes to get there. Um, And that was like the content creation part of me. I wasn't thinking like this is going to be my new path and job, but I was like something in this creative direction and I want to get some experience with it as well. So I put my mind to it and um, I guess this is always like what I stress so much, even just being 21, what I've learned at least from when you're super passionate about something, people are always like, like, if you want it, you can get it. Like, just put your mind to it. But it's not only like putting your mind to it, it's like your mind to it and then the action. Like you need to also act on it. And that was for me, at least how content creation worked out for me. Cause I always get so many questions of like, how does that even work? You just blew up. Well, I think for me, it was because I put my mind to it. I was like, I want this. This is fun for me. I enjoy this. This makes me happy. And then I posted every day for two months straight, a video every single day um, and had like a whole plan of what I'm doing. I still try and keep that up now because I feel like you need to be consistent. Yeah. But yeah, I feel like I went on a whole tangent there, but I guess that kind of sums up with no, I love that. where I'm at in my beginning of my 20s just trying to figure it out um I guess with being kind of more in this like positive mindset I always I truly believe like things will work out for you and that's something that keeps me going being like it's gonna be okay like of course I have doubts all the time like I wouldn't be human if I didn't and I think people are lying if they say that they have life figured out but yeah I think deep down I'm like it's going to be okay, even if you don't have it figured out. Or you're probably never going to fully figure it out. But 100%. That's okay. Because 100%. that's life. <laughs> I think when it comes to, like, dreams and stuff, like, an idea is just an idea. Like, yeah. Sometimes people come to me like, I have this idea. I'm like, cool, just do it. Yeah. <laughs> do you want to post videos about – just do it. Yeah. You need to start somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. And they need to stay consistent with it. Yeah. And it's about making it your priority and, and kind of making it happen. Sounds very yeah. cliche, but – when it comes to figuring out life, I mean, yes, I've been screaming it from the rooftops when I was 20. I'm kind of more at peace with it, that there's never going to come a time where you have all, everything figured out. And mm-hmm. I think the biggest realization that a lot of people have is like when your parents, 
and kind of figure out your parents don't have it figured out. Oh, and yeah. And I remember when my friends or people around me started to have kids, I was like, you're, you're going to be a mom? Like, <laughs> me and you are the same person. You, how are you ready to become a mom? And it's like, you're never ready for anything, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, you can prepare for something, um, especially with like financial things and stuff, but you're never really ready. And no. you're never going to have it figured out. I remember also like this idea of like figuring out who I am. Who is BB Jane? And I was like, cool. Let me just sit down one night and like write it out. <laughs> Let's get it going. It doesn't work like that. No. There's no end goal. And I think that way of living life of like, hey, I'm not working towards, for example, getting to know me. I'm just always on this path of getting to know myself yeah. better and becoming yeah. a better person. Yeah. That is so liberating. Yeah, it's it that, really it's is. It's like a weight lifted yeah. off my shoulder the moment I was like, cool. Yeah. And I feel like that's such a big part of being in your 20s, or at least for me, that's like a huge m mentality shift I had. Um, I don't know. For some reason, when I was like, younger in high school, all I could think about was like, oh, I just got to do this test and I got to learn. Oh, like this is so annoying. And I had like no interest in really like learning about all kinds of things, like whether it be like climate change or feminism. Like I had my little interest, but I never like took it to a level where I was like, this is so interesting and this is important. This is something I care about. Um, and I feel like, I don't know, at least for me, maybe other people can relate to this, but in my 20s, I was finally like, I can learn whatever I want to learn and I want to learn. Like I really do. And I don't know, I do like quirky little things. Like I set myself a goal that every month I read at least one book, you know, and things like that, that I never did when I was yeah, younger. But you know what it made me realize now that like when you're young, you don't have that freedom. Mm, it's like, you're kind true. of, you're like in this safe zone where like your parents kind of guide you through it, school kind of guides you through it. And now you're like, Good here you go. <laughs> and that also creates possibility for you to do different things. And it might feel like weird because you're like, yeah. oh, I'm doing all these different things. Am I on the right path? Yeah. I don't know. No one's telling you if you are. You know, so true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was super interesting. I love yeah. it. I love it. It's a really nice conversation. I loved it. Yeah. I got to learn way more about you. And I think it's just interesting in like this context of wanting to create a podcast about your 20s, talking to someone that's like 21. I think that was like a really interesting perspective. And I'm just so excited yeah. to see like where you're going to be in the next Me few too. years. Me <laughs> too. Super exciting. Well, my lovely people, I hope you found this somewhat helpful. And I'm super curious to know your perspectives on these topics. So you're always welcome to send me a DM on Instagram at Angelica. I'll link it in the show notes. And I'll also link Natalie's socials as well. Thank you so much for sitting thank with me. Thank you so much for having me. I love and, this. Yeah, it was really fun. Yeah. And thank you guys as well. Thank you. Till next week. Bye bye. Bye. Yay. Thank you.